Good evening all and welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's Global Apostolic Movement Virtual Church Service. We are under the leadership of Chief Apostle LaShawn Reese and our presiding pastor is Pastor Beverly Cole. I am Evangelist Michelle Watson and I am super excited about the word of God that is going to go forth on tonight. We welcome you and thank you for joining us we're hoping that you receive out of the service that what we receive every Sunday night from our presiding pastor and our speaker of the hour. But before we get started, we ask that you reach out to those that you know will receive this word, that can use this word, that will bless their souls as well as their households. We're asking that you share this broadcast, that you tag others, that you shoot a text, and let them know that we are on live and we're ready to receive what thus says the Lord. So sit back and relax and get ready for God's anointed word to come forth. And before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and cover us in opening prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you in prayer on this evening. Lord God, we come with an expectation on tonight. And we thank you, we praise you, God, for who you are, for what you're doing, and what you've already done, Lord. Father God, we're asking you, God, for your forgiveness for everything that we said, done, and thought that was not pleasing in your eyesight. And Father God, we give you glory on tonight and ask that you take full control. Father God, we're asking as our presiding pastor go forth on tonight, God, that when she opens her mouth, that your anointing power and fire come forth. And Father God, that the word fills our households, God. Father God, so that we could be energized, God, so that we can reach up, God, and receive what you have for us, God. Now, Father God, we're asking, Lord God, that you keep her covered, God, that there be no backlash upon her, Lord God. Father God, we're asking that you anoint our ears, God, so that we can hear the revelation that you have for us, God. And Father God, we're asking that you anoint our eyes, God, with your holy and spiritual anointing, God. And Father God, we give you praise and we glorify you, God. And we're asking that you bless every household, God, that's tuned in on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, continue to cover our chief apostle, LaShawn Reese, God. And we're asking that you continue to cover our prophetess, Tracy Magwood, God. And Father God, every GAM leader and ministry, God, we're asking that you continue to cover. And God, we give you glory and we praise your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. And we turn it over to our presiding pastor, Beverly Cole. Good evening, good evening, everyone. To God be all the glory. This morning as I woke up and I rose and I just kept hearing the spirit of the Lord says, and I even put it on some of my Facebook pages. It said, he said this morning, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have breath right now, just begin to praise him. If he's done good things for you, begin to praise him. If he kept you, begin to praise him. If you're watching this or listening to, you need to praise him because you didn't wake up on your own. Amen. He saw fit for you to come home. He saw fit for you to have a roof over your head. In this season and dispensation of grace, we have to have a spirit of gratitude. Amen. And he is a good God. No matter what we've gone through, no matter what we've been through, guess what? He will never leave us nor forsake us. So somebody just need to worship the Lord. Somebody just need to shout hallelujah. Somebody just needs to shout to God be all the glory. And no matter what, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. No matter what, God, as long as it takes, because I know you're faithful. So Father, I praise you for your faithfulness. God, I praise you for keeping me and saving me. Not only me, but all of those that are watching via Facebook or Zoom. Thank you, Lord. This is a season for us to release our praise into the atmosphere because we understand praise is a weapon. Amen. And we're going to choose praise tonight. Praise is a weapon. Amen. And we're just going to thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. We're going to open up our mouths. We're going to praise him. We're going to Shabbat him this afternoon or this night, tonight. We're going to bless his name. We're going to Tahila him. We're going to lift up holy hands. We're going to bow down before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're going to tell him that mm, he is good and he's good all the time. Hallelujah. And his mercy 
his mercy endures forever. Somebody needs to get a revelation because even in Psalms 23, and it says that his goodness and his mercy follows me all the days of my life. I just want somebody to know tonight that goodness is running after you. I want somebody to know tonight that mercy will overtake you. I want someone to know tonight that you're not by yourself, that great is he that is in you. He's in us. He's around us. He is Elohim. He is El Shaddai. He is the breasty one. He is the Lord of Lords. He is our peace. Jehovah Shalom. Someone just needs to get a revelation as to who he is. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is the light in the darkness. He is the bright and morning star. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is, he is everything to us. We just have to let him be. We just have, have to let him be the I am. Somebody just need to resist from trying to work it out and turn to the Lord and watch him work it out. Amen. And so tonight, I just want to say welcome to each and every one of you. I don't know about anybody else, but when I woke up this morning and that was in my spirit to let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So I'm going to praise him. I don't need any rocks to cry out or want any rocks to cry out. He's been too good for me to sit back and not tell of his goodness. He's been too good to me and my family for me not to express my love and my gratitude for him. He has been too good. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a good God. Somebody needs to know that in the midst of your struggle, he is still God. And guess what? He's going to work it in for your in your favor. He's going to turn it around for your good. Just hold on a little while longer and trust in the Lord. The word of God says, only believe all things are possible. And there is nothing too hard for him. Nothing, nothing. So again, I want to welcome each and every one of you, and I just want to bless the Lord, amen, and I just want to thank God for our chief apostle, LaShawn Reese, who is the founder of Global Apostolic Movement, amen, and she called forth for us to have this virtual church game, virtual where I am the presiding pastor, Pastor Beverly Cole, and so I don't, without further ado, amen, I just want to go ahead and open up with the word, with the scripture. And it's coming from Job 22 and 28. I'm going to read it out of two different uh, versions, if you will. I'm going to start out with Job 22 and 28. And I'm going to read it from the Amplified. And it says, you will also decide, decide and decree a thing. And it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. And coming out of the aromatic Bible, it says, Aramaic, I'm sorry, and it says, and you will speak a word, the word, his word, and it will happen to you, and upon your ways, the light will dawn, and if you will just look at this this passage that I just read, when we begin to decree and declare things according to God's word, we are operating in our dominion and the authority, and we are actively using our power in Christ Jesus. When we begin to speak, when we begin to say what he says, we're releasing into the atmosphere of the word. Remember last week we were talking about how the eyes of the Lord go to and fro and he's looking. He's looking for someone to bless. His eyes are going to and fro. And another passage says he's watching over his word to perform it. Can he come to your house and find the word? Amen. Because it's in the word that's going to turn some things around. It's in his word that's going to put the enemy at bay. It's in his word. And because of his word that we have life and have it more abundantly. It is his word. And so as we begin to decree some things, we're actually operating in our God-given authority. In Genesis 1, 26, it says that he has given us the authority and the power. As we begin to speak, we were created in his image. We talk about there being power in our tongue. The Lord said in this season, activate your power. It's time out for you being silent. I need for you to begin to roar. I need to, you to begin to open up your mouth and begin to decree and declare so that I can establish mm, my will in the earth's realm. And so when we begin to operate in that capacity, then what we're doing, we're walking in our dominion authority that God had ordained before the foundations of the earth. And I want to go ahead and talk about, I want to break down decree. Decree basically is a command. 
It is a commission. It's an edict. It's also a judicial de decision or order. In other words, when we begin to decree a thing, it says that the only people that can decree things are people that operate in his authority or that have authority that are in authority, not just us as believers, but I'm talking about us as believers. That's just like when the president gets in and he begins to make laws, he begins to decree things, even in the cabinet, the legislatures, when they begin to decree and they begin to write out things, they begin to write out the laws. And that's what we're doing in the spirit realm. When we understand who we are and whose we are, when we understand that death and life are in the power of our tongue, when we understand that our words, when we release the words, none of them fall to the ground. There is power in the word. There is power in the word. And so in this season, we just need to open up our mouths. And I want to give you a topic. And this topic is simply reverse it. You have the power, reverse it. Remember, we're talking about decrees. It's in your mouth. You reverse it. And we're going to go, if you will, with me. And let me break down the word reverse. Reverse means to turn upside down, mm. to invert, to negate, to undo the effect of something, mm. to overthrow, to set aside, to make boy a legal decision by a contrary against the contrary decision. In other words, when we negate something, what are we doing? We're nullifying it. We begin to make it ineffective. We begin to deny the existence or the truth of that thing. Because when we're operating in fear, and say fear is an acronym for false evidence appearing real. When we begin to reverse it, when we begin to tell the enemy what thus saith the Lord, it may look this way, it may be a fact, but truth says reverse it. Because see, by his stripes I'm healed. No matter what the diagnosis is, I may have to go through the process, but the word of God says that Jesus mm, died on the cross for me. His blood was shed for my healing. His blood was shed for my deliverance. On the cross where they nailed him, where they beat him and they scorched him. It said that he was so mm, marred beyond recognition that they couldn't even recognize or didn't even know that that was even a human. He went through all of that. So in this season, I have to come back and I have to reverse some things. I know what was said. I know how I feel. I know what I went through, but the word of God says in this season, it's our season to reverse some things. And how are you going to do it? We're going to do it by opening up our mouths. We're going to do it by officially making decrees in the spirit realm. We're going to set some laws in place that God had intended before the foundations of the earth. But somehow, maybe we became a little weary. I know I did. Maybe we became a little battle fatigue. I know I did. I know there are times when it seems like the enemy is coming in like a flood and you don't know what to do. But the Lord says in this season, open your mouth and begin to say what I say until you see that thing turn around. It's your season to reverse it. It's in your power. It's in your mind. Mouth. Amen. Because if we look at Jeremiah 1 and 10, I believe, when he says that he put his words in our mouth, he gave us the authority and the ability to tear down, to pull down, to uproot and to throw down. He's given us the ability not only to bring about destruction when the enemy is coming at us, but he gave us the authority and the power in his name that we can even build and plant. We can build and plant some things. So we're going to plant the word that's the us uh, sowing the seed. And I decree and declare tonight that it's going to fall on fertile soil. So we're here to reverse it. We're here to negate it. We're here to undo the very power and the works of the enemy. Jesus died and he came to destroy the works of the devil. Because we understand in John 10, 10, it says that the enemy comes but to steal to kill and to destroy. He wants us to turn from God and make him our God. He wants us to turn from God by giving us false evidence. He wants us to turn from God by keeping us antsy to the point where we're a little anxious. When the word of God says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Let our requests be made known unto God. And so tonight we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna say what the Lord said. 
in the name of Jesus. So for those that have a Bible, if you will, turn with me to Esther 8. Mm. Esther chapter eight, and we all know the story about Esther and what Haman wanted to do and how Mordecai brought her in and she became the queen instead of Vesta. We're gonna walk a little bit because even in the midst of this, we know that Esther called for a fast because Haman, who was the enemy of the Jews. See, we all have enemies. His name just happened to be Haman. Who is your Haman or what is your Haman that is trying to come against you to where you can't walk in peace, to where you can't operate in the things of God, to where you're about ready to throw in the towel? What Haman are you dealing with today? What circumstance, what situation, what are you dealing with to where you're finding it so hard to trust in the Lord with all your heart, where you're finding it so hard to stand. Some of you are about ready to throw in the towel, but I came tonight to decree to you. I came tonight to tell you to simply reverse it. You said it sounds easy, but it's not really easy, but it's something it is necessary. It's a command. And I want you to see what happened when we're, I'm talking about Haman. Now we all know the story. Mm. We all know the story about Haman, how he was trying to kill off the Jews and Haman had gone before the king and he actually began to write out a decree, giving them the permission in that town, in that city, in that region to come against all of the children of Israel or all the Jews, if you will. They had written a decree or an edict. In other words, and they passed this law that no matter where they go in that providence, no matter where they go, that they had the right and the ability to kill the Jews. And even the worst part about that is the Jews couldn't do anything about it because the law had been set. And it's something about something being written down. We have the word. It's something about something being written down. And not only was it written, but it was sealed with the signet ring of the king. In other words, what was written was sealed. What was said was sealed. And it gave them the permission and the right to destroy the, Jew the Jews. And so tonight the Lord says, I need for you to deal with your Haman. I need for you to deal with that decree. I need for you to begin to reverse the very things that were said. I need for you in the season to stand up and fight. Only thing you have to do is to begin to decree my word because the Lord has been putting this in my spirit. He said that I am fighting for you in 2023. Somebody needs to say that. God is fighting for me in 2023. But guess what, people of God? You got to give him something to work with. Your tears are not really moving him, although he has them in a bottle. In this season, God says, I need for my children to rise up and to operate in their divine authority. I need for them to rise, to rise up and to walk in their dominion mandate. There are some things that the enemy has been running rampant with, but once you begin to open your mouth, once you begin to, to reverse the decrees that have been spoken against you, once once you begin to understand that the word of God has power, there is power in the word because we all remember the story when Jesus in Luke 4, I believe, when it was the enemy came and said that he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the tempter came, the enemy came and he began to tell him, if you are the son of God, do X, Y, and Z, if you are. See, he was beginning to question him and he already knew who he was. You know how I know? It says because because when he was baptized, the heavens opened and the Lord began to speak that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So it's not like he didn't know. But one of the things that I found out, people of God, the word if, he was trying to get him to move because the enemy had no power over him. But if he would surrender, but if he would just submit, so I'm going to tempt him a little bit. What is Haman tempting you with? What is he telling you about your finances? What is he telling you about your marriage? What is he telling you about your children? What is he telling you about the business, the job, the ministry? What is he telling you about your health? What is Haman telling you so much so that he put it in writing? He put it in writing. And so now the enemy has legal rights. The king had given the enemy rights 
to go after the Jews, but I thank God for mercy. I thank God for favor. I thank him. And as we're looking at Esther, Esther is representative of the church. It's time for the church to call for a fast. I'm not talking about to lose weight. I'm talking about a fast that's going to break yokes. I'm talking about a fast that's going to bring forth suddenly healing and whatever you need. I'm talking about a fast that is designed by God for his purpose. I'm talking about a fast, not mm, ritualistic if you will, or religiously. I'm talking about a fast that God has designed for us to walk in so some things can shift in the atmosphere so we can begin to afflict our souls so that we can clear out the clutter of our mind so we can silence all of the noise, all of the rhetoric, silence all of the lies. I'm talking about a fast that will cause us to get close to God. I'm talking about a fast that will cause us to stand up and begin to decree. I'm talking about a fast that will turn some things around just like Esther did. She was the ecclesia. She was the church, a representative of it. Because when she heard what Haman had done through Mordecai, in the beginning, she said, I believe she said within her heart, mm, because he told her, you're going to have to go before the king. She wasn't seeing that because see, even back in those days, whenever you were invited or you had to go see the king. You have to be invited and the scepter had to be presented before you in order for you to come forth. But I bless God that we don't have that type of law. You have the ability to go before the Lord boldly, but you can't go dirty. You have to go boldly, but you can't have any art in your heart. You have to go boldly. You have to lay aside all of the unforgiveness. You can go boldly before the throne of grace because of the cross, because of the blood, everything that Jesus died for. We're operating now, people of God, in the finished works of Christ. We already know that he put principalities and powers. It said that he began to leave captivity captive. In other words, he had to go do some damage. He came to destroy the very works of the devil. But you don't know what they are if you don't read. You don't know what they are if you don't know your promises. You don't know what they are if you don't realize that you are a, mm, a child of the Most High God. And that every... In, mm, I call it the last will and testament. That's the old and the new testament. That is his will for your life. That's your inheritance. Once you understand, in order to live the Zoe life, the abundant life that Jesus died for, there are some things you're going to have to reverse. I don't know what Haman said to you, but you got to reverse it. When he was walking out the door, he probably said, nobody will ever want you. You were never any good. I don't know what Haman wrote out over you or against you. Maybe it was your teacher. I don't know what it was, but the enemy was trying to come in and it's still wreaking havoc. But today the Lord said, reverse it. Begin to open up your mouth and begin to decree. Begin to open up your mouth. And when you decree based on my word, I'm going to cause it to be settled. In other words, it's going to be done. When you begin to decree, I'm going to cause it to be made manifest, but you have to do it in faith. And you have to know what belongs to you. A lot of times we operate and we don't know what our covenant is. We operate, we don't even know what the promises of God are. And so we begin to mm, believe the lies that the enemy is telling us. And so it goes on to say that even as Esther went in and she began to deal with Mordecai and Mordecai told her, he says that you, in other words, are our last hope. In other words, Mordecai says that now Queen Esther, that's what the Lord is saying. My church, rise up. My church, hear what I'm saying. The earth is moaning and groaning with birth pains. Church, hear what I'm saying. I need for you to go in and begin to tear some things down because the enemy is trying to legalize abortion. I'm not a against anybody, but I'm just talking about that is the shedding of innocent blood. I'm talking about our children being lulled away and seduced by witchcraft, by sorcery. I'm talking about we have that ability to reverse some things because it was written mm, in the legislation. It was written that our children can't pray in church, but people of God, God say Esther arise and begin to reverse that decree that Haman had put out. And we all know that later on in the story that Esther did get an opportunity to go in before the king. And she began to reveal Haman's plan. But by then, Haman had already gone out and built gallows because he had made up in his mind that the first Jew he was going to kill was Mordecai. Mm. 
And so he had the gallows built. And I want to share one thing as I'm moving on. I'm going to come back. I want to tell you something about when the enemy is trying to plot against you, what is going to happen. Not only do we reverse what our decrees, but the Lord is going to reverse some things. There's going to be a boomerang, boomerang effect that is released. Proverbs 26 and 27 from the Amplified reads, whoever digs a pit for another man's feet, will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone up a hill on him, uh, he who rolls a stone up a hill to do mischief, it will come back on him. In other words, in this season, there are some things you don't have to fight. But what I am saying to you that whenever the enemy is coming in, and whether it's a plot whether it's a conspiracy on your job or maybe just even against your person. Maybe it's persecution. Maybe it's trying to devour or to contaminate. Ah, contaminate you by words that are spoken because we understand that words do have power. The greatest lie that the enemy told and we bought into when he said sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you. That is so far from the truth, because if the word in Proverbs says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and we're going to give an account for every idle word we speak, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and if we understand that then we do know that words have the ability to stop. Words have the ability to hinder. Words have the ability to be released over you, releasing the demonic realm or the demonic side or mm, demons to come after you and to wreak havoc. They may, if they can't get to you, we do understand and know that he's not really trying to just get you. He wants the ministry to stop. He wants the prophetic word to cease. He wants us not to pray. He wants us even to become ignorant as to who we are. The word of God says that my children perish or are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the word says that he will not have us ignorant of any of the enemy's devices. So in other words, I came to tell you, it's time for you to reverse the decree that Haman has said. The Lord had already dealt with the enemy. So we're going to walk in the finished works of Christ. And it goes on to say that when mm, Esther went in before Mordecai, I'm sorry, mm, when Esther went in before the king, and Mordecai had already found out the plot and the plan of what Haman had des mm, designed for them. And when he went in and told Esther, Esther, arise, that's us. I don't need, we don't need to be fearful because the Lord is on our side. Remember, the Lord will fight for us. We just have to give him something to work with. Give him us, give him ourselves so that we can surrender everything to the Lord in this season. He wants it all. He wants to come in and heal. He wants to come in and mm, to restore. If he didn't, he wouldn't have Paul's his son to die on a cross for our sins that we may be made whole. This is the season that he said he's going to prepare a table before it's in the presence of our enemies. Can you imagine what Haman may have thought when the plan was discovered and revealed? It said that the very gallows that Haman had set up for Mordecai, he himself was hung on. But notice the flesh died, but nobody ever dealt with the decree. Notice that not only did Haman die, it said that they eventually had to kill his 10 sons. In other words, God don't want any residue remaining. I know it's not good grammar, but it does hit a point. God wants us to deal with all of the residue from the decree. He wants to deal with it so that our children won't have to walk in it. He wants us to deal with it so that those that are of a weaker faith or may not know because we have been told to, to bear the infirmities of the weak. He wants us to rise up this exceedingly great army and to begin to take down the enemy, to go in and take what the enemy has stole from us. He wants us to stand and to know that he's going to reverse it for every ditch. Remember, you don't have to fight. The word of God says that vengeance belongs to me. I will repay. All you have to do is to repent. All you have to do is to keep your heart in check. Because even in Genesis, it talks about when Cain and Abel, it says that anger, he was talking to Cain, it's waiting at the door for you. It's waiting to pounce on you. Sin is waiting. It's waiting to pounce. 
because he knows of your frustrations, it's ready to pounce because he's been giving access through this decree. Remember what a decree is. It's a judicial decision or an order that is only written and have the ability to be carried out once the king signs off on it. See, our king has already signed off on our. When we gave ourselves over to the Lord, it says that we were sealed with the promise, a guarantee as to who we are. See, we're not just talking about fire insurance. I'm talking about the ability to walk in your dominion mandate. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of the enemy trying to press up against my children. It's not that I'm ignorant of the enemy's devices. I just know how to fight now. And there are some things that I can set aside. There are some things that I can turn around. There are some things that I can stand and watch God for every dish that he does for me or even my children or my children's children. I'm going to see the enemy fall in for every ditch, for every pit, for every snare, for every trap that he set for us because God has given me the wisdom and the ability to call that thing to boomerang, the wisdom and the ability to silence the decree that was issued against them. And it goes on to say that when, when King, when Queen Esther went before the king and she began to ask the king, you reverse it. Now we know that Haman is dead. We know that his children have all been, are dead. We know all of this, but there is still a law that has been set in place that it gives the enemy the legal right Notice I said legal because some of us are dealing with the enemy and he's trying to come in illegally because the door was open that we didn't understand. See, remember, my children are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We didn't know where it was coming from. We had no idea that opening up the door by reading our horoscope was going to open up a door for the enemy. We didn't understand by even playing with the Ouija board that the enemy had an access. We didn't even understand how when we go through a trauma, that there is a door that's open. And if we're not careful, he's going to move in. We didn't understand that even listening to some of the music that our children are listening to, there are witches that are singing in the background. There are chants that are being released. See, we didn't even understand that while our children are looking at some things on TV, I'm talking about the Harry Potter. I'm talking about the Sabrina the Witch. I'm talking about the mm, charm. I'm talking about all of these things, even in Disney. Disney uh, that is silently enticing uh, and seducing our children uh, to where they want to mm, cast spells, uh, to where they're no longer obedient to their parents, uh, to where they're running after all manner of things. Uh, there is a corruptness in this world. Uh, we call it the Luciferian spirit, uh, the spirit of Lucifer, uh, the spirit of the world that's trying to take our children. Uh, see, there was a decree that was written, uh, and the enemy is coming after us uh, because it says that the enemy goes about uh, seeking whom he may devour, but I came tonight to tell you to reverse that decree, reverse that decision, because it goes on to say here in chapter nine, I didn't read it all in eight. Oh, I just got a little bit excited. Oh, glory to God. That in chapter nine, it's coming down in the name of Jesus. It says that when she went before the king, and she asked the king to reverse that decision. The king couldn't reverse it because as we know that once a king stamps it, once it's already sealed, he will not undo his word. He will not change anything because his word stands. So in other words, once he sealed it, once he confirmed it and approved it, he couldn't go back on it. But he gave a different alternative, just like our God. See, God already knew. And just think about this, when Adam and Eve were in the garden and it said that the enemy seduced, and other, that's my word seduced, but he convinced her to partake of the fruit and her husband was with her, with her. And so she gave it over to him. What are you saying? I'm saying that even though the enemy had a plan and the Lord already knew, remember he knew your end in the beginning. He already knew what was because the word of God said that 
Christ was slain before the foundations of the earth. See, a plan had been established. In other words, God had a ram in the bush just waiting for us because he knew we were just flesh. He knew we couldn't endure. He knew that there were some temptations that would be too great for us. That's why Jesus had to come in an earth suit and die on the cross and to take the lashes. He became the ultimate sacrifice, giving us access to the king, giving us access to the covenant, giving us access to the, mm, eternal life, giving us access to every spiritual weapon there is, because we need to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not a flesh fight. It's a spiritual fight. It's not a flesh fight. It's a truth encounter. It's not a flesh fight. And the Lord has given us everything that we need in our spiritual arsenal. I'm talking about the Lord of the heaven's armies. And not only do we have access to those weapons, he said, let me ice it. In other words, let me give you just a little bit more. Whenever you open your mouth, I've given my angels charge to go after those words, to bring to pass whatever you stand in need of. Don't believe me, just ask. Jacob, as he laid and he saw the angels ascending and descending. If you don't believe me, just ask Daniel, because when he prayed, although his prayers was hindered, and it says for 21 days, and then the Lord had to send Michael, the archangel, to so that he can release the answer into the spirit realm. I'm here to tell you, according to Psalms 91, the Lord says that he's given his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. But guess what? You can nullify it with your mouth. Guess what? You have the ability to call the word forth just as God decreed. And watch God make good on his word. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. The same way the king in the book of Esther could not go back on his decree or his word. Anything that he put in writing, God will not violate his own word either. But he did have a ram. And so here, because the king says, now I can't do nothing about that. It's already gone. Now remember, the enemy is already dead. Remember, the whole household has already been annihilated or eradicated, if you will. But the words, the rule, the law was still in place and it made it still effective. And so what did the king tell Esther? And let me read this to you right here. And it says here, we see the turnaround because it says that all of these governors, all of the satraps and all of the leaders in the land were pretty much in league with Haman. I want you to understand everybody may not be for you. I want you to understand that there is a conspiracy taking place. And we see it every day when we watch the news. There is a conspiracy that's taking place and it's intended to silence. It's intended to kill, steal, and destroy our destiny. It's intended to stop us from decreeing and declaring the name of Jesus. It's intended for us to walk according to the world. But I came to tell you, you're not of this world. You're in it, but you're not of it. You've been given a different mandate. You are only an ambassador. And we're to call those things that be not as though they were. We are to create small colonies on the earth realm so that his kingdom will come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so it goes on to say that all of these were in league. They were in league together to kill off all the Jews. See, it's one bad apple that'll spoil a whole bunch. I don't know everything that Haman told him, but he had to be quite influential. I don't know everything that Haman did to convince them to come over to the, to the point where they wanted to kill off every Jew there was and to have the king sign off. And the sad part about it is the king did it. The king sealed it with his ring. In other words, he said, so be it. You go and you do what you do. There was no defense. The Jews were helpless. It was nothing they could do but Esther, but the Ecclesia, but us, but those that are called by his name. It says that she went in before the king. It's time for us to go before the king in our secret closet, to go before the kings, even when we're praying corporately, to go before the kings and to get back to the original blueprint where prayer is a mandate. Pray without ceasing, because when we pray, we give God the permission to come in and let his will be done. When we pray, we're saying to the angels, go here and go there. When we begin to pray, we're pulling down the very works of the devil. When we begin to pray, 
we're decreeing that his word may be established in the earth realm. And it goes on to say that when she went in, this is Esther 9 and 1, and it says, on the very day when the enemies of the Jews hoped to gain the mastery over them, the reverse occurred. <laughs> Hear that again. The very day that the enemy was just about to go, the decree had already been set, but now they were getting ready to act upon it. It says that after it was time for them to go in. See, the enemy is not going to move ahead of his time. He already got you. We used to say he, he's already peeped out your whole card. In other words, he already knows what's going to affect you. He already knows that we as believers, we don't have the ability and we don't like waiting. We want everything instant because we're more fearful of what man will think when our prayers are not answered. We're more concerned with what the people are going to say when they came and they took the car. You're more concerned with what they're going to say when the husband walked out or he was committing adultery or you. We're more concerned about man than we are about God. But the very day that the enemy was going to carry out his plan against the Jews, see, this is your day that the reversal is coming. I decree it in the name of Jesus. And it says that instead, God's people now had power over those who hated them. In other words, when Esther went in and she began to ask the king, reverse your decision. Haman is dead, but this law is already in, in the making and the working. I know that they're preparing because they've already been given the clearance. They've already been given the go. So King, if I be pleasing in your sight, in other words, if you are pleased with me, could you please reverse this decision? And he said, no, I can't reverse it, but this is what you can do. You do it. I'm not going to do it. That's what he told Esther, you do it. You and Mordecai write out a new decree. I got to read that to you. He told them to write out a new decree and put it in order. Help me, Holy Ghost. They wrote out a new decree and it gave them the ability to stand up and fight. They gave out a new decree that was sent out through all of the providence because see, when Haman, had released this decree. The children of Israel couldn't even defend themselves. But can I tell you, God had a ram in the bush. His name was Jesus. And by his blood, the decree has already been reversed. But you need to know how to reverse the decree that has been set against you. Is it sickness? Reverse it. By his stripes, you are healed. Not only reverse it, but begin to walk in it. Ask the Lord, what is it that you are doing? And I, I trust I do the same because there are some things I'm trying to break. And I keep asking the Lord to show me the root, show me where it came in at, and how do I deal with it? What is the root? Where did it come in? And how do I deal with it? Those ought to be the three questions that you ask. Because if you're just going to cut it off, it's going to keep coming back. The same way that the Lord, that the king, <laughs> told Esther and Mordecai, you write it. Whatever you say, you put it in writing. That's what the Lord is saying. Whatever you say, based on my word, I'm going to perform it. Whatever you say, based on my words, it shall come to pass. Because we already know in Isaiah, when the word of God begins to decree and declare based on his word, some things that had to be turned around. We already know, according to Isaiah, that the word of God says that when his word goes forth, it shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish everything that he sent it to do. But let me read it to you out of the Amplified. Amplified, Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so will my word be. We can stop right there. Nothing else need be said. So will my word be. If you decree a thing, it's going to be established. So will my word be. What do you need to reverse? What decree did Haman release over your family, over your finances, to where you have to go in? Isaiah 55. I got excited about so will my word be. <laughs> Woo. Which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void. 
in other words, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Let me read that. And, and, and as I'm reading it, I'm decreeing that it's taking root in your heart. Isaiah 55, somebody needs to write this down. You research it for yourself and you begin to chew on it. You begin to meditate on it. You begin to ingest that very word, ingest it, digest it. So it become in the very marrow of your being. You need to speak it because the word says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is in your heart? Is it Haman's life? Is this Haman's decree of death over you? Is it the trauma? What is it? You have the ability to reverse it. Isaiah 55 and 11 reads again from the Amplified. So will my word be, which goes out of my mouth. It will not return. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. In Isaiah 14 and 27, the New Living Translation, it reads, the Lord of mm, heaven's armies has spoken. Who can change his plan? When his hand is raised, who can stop him? In other words, can I put it to you like this? According to Jeremiah, I think it's 32, 27. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything that God cannot do? No, nothing. He says here, once we begin to get the word in, in our mouth, and I'm just going to read what the Lord gave me earlier. It says, people of God, it is time to open our mouths and decree and declare God's word. God says, I have given you everything you need. You have your spiritual weapons. This plan, plot, and trap that the enemy said cannot be overthrown. I'm sorry, this plan, this plot, this trap that the enemy has set can be overthrown. It's time to fight. It's time to issue a cease and desist order in the spirit realm to the enemy regarding yourselves, regarding your family, regarding your health, regarding your finances, regarding your children, regarding this nation, regarding our schools, regarding the spirit of death, the spirit of suicide, the spirit of murder, regarding mental issues, the spirit of perversion, the spirit of witchcraft. It's time for us to open up our mouth and decree a this and deceit order. Decree a thing and it shall be established. It's time for us to put the word of God in our mouths and begin to tell the enemy it's written. It's written that by his stripes I'm healed. It's written that my whole household shall be saved. It's written that no matter what I do, that the Lord is with me and he's a keeper. It is written that he's going to fight for me. Remember when he told Jehoshaphat, this battle don't belong to you. This battle is... Mm, it's mine. The Lord will fight your battle, but you got to give him something to work with. It's time to turn Haman's mm, decrees around. It's time to reverse the matter. It's time to reverse the curse. It's time to turn it all around and allow it to work out for God's favor. The enemy doesn't want you to walk into your destiny. He doesn't want your children to go forth in the destiny. I'm not boasting about who he is. I'm boasting about the one who's omnipotent. I'm boasting about the one in the beginning. Mm, already knew that he was going to have to shed his son's blood for the remission of our sins. He already knew that he had a plan set. He had a ram in the bush. And so now this is your ram. The ability to reverse a decree and to set one for yourself. It's time for us to take back what the enemy has stolen. It's time for us to rise up in this season. Mm. And it says that on the very day again, I'm going to read that. Esther 1, I'm sorry, 9 and 1 says that on the very day when the enemy of the Jew hoped to gain mastery over them, the reverse occurred. I don't know, maybe you might be in your midnight hour, but I'm here to tell you that even in your midnight hour, God has the ability to reverse the decree. And the very trap that the enemy had set for you, he himself will fall into it. Can I tell you that on the enemy is trying to take you out. 
The doctors have given you a report. They said, call in the family. There is nothing else we can do. You're right. Because in this season, people of God, the help of man is useless. There are some things that God's going to use people for. But our confidence, our hope, our trust, and our faith is not in a man. It's not in flesh. But it's in the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's in the healer. It's in the way maker. It's in the promise keeper. It's in the light and the darkness. It's in the one who created us. It's in Yahweh. It is in the I am that I am. And so it's time for us to begin <laughs> with the power that we have been given <laughs> to, decree some, to decree some things because we all know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. <laughs> it's time for us <laughs> to lay down every weapon, carnal weapon. It says that for the weapons of my warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's time for us to get to work. It's time to reverse it. It's time to reverse it. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. It's time to reverse it. You write out your decree. How you do that, pastor? You get the word of God. Remember, first, you got to find out who's fighting you. First, you got to find out what is your Haman? What is your enemy trying to do to you? If it's signet, okay, that's Haman. So your job in order to reverse it is to go and find the word of God that lines up. We're taking fact and we're taking truth. The word of God says, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. It's not, it is a truth encounter. It's the word that's going to fight for you. The word bled and died. Remember, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Remember, the word came in flesh, Emmanuel. It's already finished and we win. Just like Esther and Mordecai. Can I call you to rise up, Ecclesia? Can I call you to get up, Esther? Don't be afraid of the king. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Thank God for the blood. But this is the season to confess. Confess your sins. It's even a season to let him know where it hurt. It's a season for you to go in and get the strategies from the Lord. Because once you realize and recognize who your Haman is, get the word. And you keep decreeing and you keep standing on it until you see it reverse. Don't get weary because the enemy will try to wait you out. Don't get weary. I'm sorry, don't get weary in well-doing. This is your season. And just know that whoever's plotting wrong against you, pray for them. That's what the word says, pray. Begin to bless them. They don't realize that they themselves are gonna fall into every ditch, every snare, every trap. It's not for us to gloat. I'm just here to let you know God has got your back. Remember, he's fighting for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember to decree, God is fighting for me in 2023. He fights with his word. Take the word. Ingest it. Speak it until you see the manifestation, manifestation of his promise. God in this season desires to be glorified. We're vessels, his vessels. It's time for us to reverse it, reverse it so that children can be free, reverse it because he is coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. And for those who don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sins, if you have a desire to be able to stand and fight and knowing that God's got your back, he's your rear guard, then just repeat after me, Father, I acknowledge that Jesus is the son of God. He died for my sins and on the third day rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. Take control. If you said those simple words, it's not a hard thing. It's simple. But the thing comes in with confession and faith and believing that it's already done. Now you can reverse 
the decrees that your Haman has set before you. Amen. It's time to reverse it. Rise up, Ecclesia. Rise up and reverse it. God bless you all. And I play, pray this word was a blessing to you all. I now turn it over for our announcement. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you would like to sow into this movement and financially support the initiatives that we are doing at Global Apostolic Movement, we have six ways for you to do so. You can visit our website at www.gamovement.org to give by credit or debit card. We are on Cash App at dollar sign GA Movement, PayPal and Zelle at our email address gamovement21 at gmail.com. And if you're familiar with the Givelify app, we are there as well under Global Apostolic Movement. Please feel free to mail in a check or money order to our P.O. Box at 552-696, Miami Gardens, Florida, 33055. Global Apostolic Movement has launched our outreach ministry and we invite you to join us as we seek to connect globally with those in need. If you are interested in supporting, please be on the lookout for information that will be posted on our social media pages. We thank you in advance for your assistance in helping us with our pursuit to help others. You're cordially invited to St. John AME's Spring Banquet on Saturday, April 29th at 5 p.m. at the Family Life Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Our very own prophetess Tracy B. Magwood will be the guest speaker. Tickets are $50. If you're interested in attending, please RSVP at stjohnbanquet.eventbrite.com. You can meet us back here next Sunday and every Sunday at 7 p.m. However you are tuning in now is the way to join next week. We are on the same Zoom meeting ID every week and Facebook Live at Global Apostolic Movement. And now for our benediction. Yes. As usual, the word of the Lord came forth with power and fire on tonight. Tonight's topic was reverse it. Pastor Cole asked on tonight, what Haman are you dealing with? What is Haman tempting you with? It's time to reverse the decree that Haman has sent. People of God, begin to open up your mouth and begin to decree in faith so that God can step in and make manifest. My God, God has given us access, people of God. The Lord will fight for us. I don't know about you, but that part alone has gotten me excited to know that we got God on our side and he will fight for us, but we have to give him something to fight with. So continue to pray without ceasing. Stay steadfast. Hold on tight to God and his word. God has given us power in the name of Jesus. My God, reverse it, reverse it, reverse it. What a word. Thank you, Pastor Cole, for that powerful and anointed word on tonight. You have given me seed. You have given me a push to go through the rest of my week. Thank you, Lord. And now for our benediction. Jude 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us on tonight. I pray that you were ignited. We pray that you join us again on next Sunday for thus says the Lord, you are dismissed. God bless you.